Okay, so we're gonna, this is Lean House, which you may see more than once. We're gonna talk a little bit about this. I love this example because I think it does a pretty good job. I think it does a pretty good job of summarizing what Lean is. So at the foundation of this house are people. Uh, anybody work in industry? How long are you, how long have you worked? Do you, where are you at? Oh, it's the same. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I worked at Lockheed Martin. How long? Just six months. Were you in the manufacturing area? Okay, confirm for me for the class. Are people the biggest problem you have in an organization? Is that true? People. People. People are the difference between great companies and not great companies. And, and here's the other thing. This is what you may not know. There are no bad people. they are just bad systems. And bad systems will bring out the worst in people. There are rare exceptions of people that somehow can be disrespected and they still do well. But that's a minority. Not many people can do that. Most people return the favor of disrespect when they're disrespected. When you have a, remember when I briefly talked about the NUMI exa example, belligerent UAW union, GM shut the plant down. Toyota came in, hired the same belligerent union members, best performing plant in the entire corporation in one year. Is it the bad people? It's never, never, never the people. It's always the system. We're all random. We all have our idiosyncrasies. So the foundation of lean is the people in the organization, the team structure, how they are a part of solving problems for the organization, how they contribute at the lowest level. The people putting the parts together. They know things no one else does. They know what goes wrong. Nobody knows. If you're not linked in and they're not part of solving problems, you're missing a great opportunity. I, I like to say if you're not using your people properly and you're profitable, it's only accidental. You're accidentally making money. It's a joke, but you may have a product no one has. or You can survive it because your competitors are as bad as you are. Then standardization. Standardization, when you'll learn more about who Taiichi Ono is. Taiichi Ono is obsessive compulsive or he was. He's no longer with us. Obsessive compulsive disorder about standardization. Every aspect of the system is detailed, defined, and understood. The current state of every system is clear. And if you walk in the operation, you see deviation right away because it's so well prescribed. Taiichi Ono takes it even further. He standardizes the way you think. Do the 5Y. Anybody heard of a 5Y analysis? Pretty simple, isn't it? Seems pretty simple. There's a little complexity to it. You kind of got to learn to use it. But it's a pretty simple problem solving tool. So why would Taiichi Ono say we can be a great company using the 5Y? It's not the 5Y that does it. It's the standardization of people's thought through a problem. I've got my whole organization. I've eliminated variation in how they solve problems by using a structured methodology. That's how obsessive he was with standards. So standards from the job station to the facility to even the way the people work within the organization is highly, highly structured. Okay, I'll build these pillars up. These are the two pillars of lean. I know there's a lot of words here. Jadoka, just in time. Jadoka represents, I build a defect, I fix it in station. Ideally, I can't build a defect, but I never pass it forward. Can't pass it forward. So we build into the work mechanisms that don't allow a defect to move. That's that whole principle of Jadoka. And we'll talk more about that, where that inspiration came from. It's really in the DNA of Toyota. The automated loom probably is where this idea came from, but we'll, we'll get into that. Uh, Kanban and Hijunka, uh, I'm sorry, quality of the source and Andon. Anybody know what Andon is? Andon's where every operator on the line has the ability to pull the cord to stop the line because they see a defect. I like to say that's not Jadoka though. That assumes people see the defect. That's the biggest problem you have in manufacturing. People don't see the defect. So I give them a cord, I tell them to pull the cord, but they don't know they have a defect. Does you no good. So you gotta be able to see the defect. But Andon was an attempt to say where I can't have the machine understand the deviation and shut itself down, at least I can give the operator the ability to stop if they see it. All right, so Again, obsessively compulsive with that. We must stop the process if we have a defect in the station. Can't produce work. Do I have experience in automotive manufacturing with pushing defects forward in Detroit? <laughs> yeah, I have quite a bit of experience with that. I can tell stories about that. And I can tell you the difference between the two. And I can tell you what it does to an assembly plant when you don't control quality in station. And you'll learn that in the Lego lab. You'll, you'll see very clearly what happens if you don't build quality in station. Absolute disaster. The place just locks up. Can't function. Well, Detroit could afford to push defects forward because they were competing with Detroit. They were competing with Europe. They also pushed defects forward. But when Toyota came along, they are in serious trouble. So they had to adopt this. They had to painfully adopt these methods out of necessity to survive. And then this is a typical thing in an organization that is a manufacturing lean organization, safety, quality, delivery, cost, morale. High level metrics in those categories, even if it's one single metric that drives the organization, trended in Prado. I know exactly where I am. I know whether I'm improving on the data and I have that as a source, my, my, uh, it's policy deployment from the top of the organization down to the process and everybody knows where they stand. And we can ask questions. We can go up, Bob could ask questions, 
I think Toyota does a better job of asking questions. You can ask, what's going on here? I see your trend, it's not proving. And Bob would say things like, do I have the right person running this area? Just a question, you know, painful question. But it, now that's not how you do it. So I'm, I'm, I'm teaching the wrong way right now. But, but the data is critically important because you can have professional discussions about what's not happening in the area and how we can improve it. So data critically important, and then continuous improvement. And we'll get more into continuous improvement. This is really, really key to Toyota, key to Lean. This whole philosophical approach, I liken it to religion. Am I gonna be like God if I work hard my whole life? Is anybody gonna be like God working hard their whole life? Does that mean you don't try? Right? Do you know what you should do to be like God? Kinda, right? I think we kinda all know where we wanna go. Should we incrementally every day try to improve the way we live? Yeah. That religion is Lean. And I'm telling you, it's a religion. The whole idea of continuous improvement in these organizations. And we'll get a little bit more into that. And then the thing that drives the whole system is the customer. Everything's about the customer. That's not lip service, genuinely. How do I service the customer? That's both external and internal. So I'm a department that feeds another department. I genuinely understand, respect, and appreciate what I do to my customer, and I try my best to satisfy their needs in quality and throughput, all the way to the final customer. That focus. So we're gonna talk about this lean house in more detail, but all the disciplines that we will talk about throughout the course of the semester all fit in one of these areas. So that's a good summary to think of how it works. The foundation of the house, the pillars that hold it up. And continuous improvement, the heart and soul of it. Using people and teams to drive improvement. So has anybody heard of PDCA? That term, PDCA? Plan, do, check, act, plan, do, check, act, plan, do, check, act. So you make a plan because you have a hypothesis. You implement your plan. Do you stop? No, you validate and check and verify your plan, and you say, wow, you know, there's a couple more things we can do to improve this and make it better. Do you think a plan implemented first time is ever good? Almost never. I rarely have seen it. So you do a good job. What are we doing in the lab, in the Lego lab? Changing it every year, aren't we? Right. Because it's never good enough. So we're always looking at ways to make it better. And that's how we live. And that's an exciting way to live. So you're not making the donuts every day. You're going to work not to make cars. You're not going to work to make aircraft engines. You're going to work to improve. Your job is to improve. That's why you live. The business takes care of itself. The standards are there. People understand the system. They know how to operate the system. You're not there to operate the system. You're there to improve. That's how Toyota does business. Um, so my little joke on PDCA, in some companies, it, it means something different. Some companies, it doesn't mean plan, do, check, act. Some companies, it means please don't change anything. Does any of you work for a company like that? <laughs> <laughs> true. Very true. 